Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm doing a roll review on Ilford's HP5 black and white negative film. Ilford's HP5 black and white negative film is easily like one of the most popular and like most shot black and white films available out there today. And you can shoot it in 35 millimeter, medium format 120, and also large format sheet film like 4x5. If you're shooting film, then you should already be familiar with Ilford because they're one of like the biggest names in black and white film. Ilford is a UK film company that has a long, rich history behind it dating back to the 1800s. So if you're getting into film for the first time and you're thinking that Kodak and Fuji are really like the only names to know, then you should probably consider broadening your horizons. They are a huge manufacturer for black and white film, black and white chemicals, and black and white paper. And they are super important for keeping a lot of this stuff alive. And one of their most popular and well-known films is HP5. HP5, or like the current iteration, which is technically called HP5 Plus, is a 400 ISO black and white negative film. And it's a really great place for starting to shoot black and white. It's a staple, and also for a lot of people, it's just their go-to black and white film as well. HP5 is also a lot like the other big black and white films out there in that it has like a long legacy behind it. Things like Tri-X and T-Max and HP5 have been around for a long time. It was originally released like 70 years ago, originally just as as HP, slowly working its way up to HP 5 Plus, which was introduced in 1989. So it's the kind of film that has some experience under its belt at this point. I shot some HP 5 in both 35 millimeter, but also in six by nine, 120 medium format. Six by nine being the frame size, and I shot it on the medium format, Mamiya Universal. Also, this stuff was developed myself using Kodak's HC 110 developer and scanned on an Epson V700 flatbed scanner. If you wanna see more examples of this stuff, you can head over to the link in the description for the Analog Resurgence Patreon and you can see like scans and everything, extra information for stuff that I talk about and focus on in the videos. Let's take a look at some examples of HP5 and also stack it up against some of the other black and white films out there to help you make a decision. What can I say about HP5 that hasn't been said like a million times over by everybody else over the course of its lifespan? HP5 is a good choice for a nice standard black and white film to shoot. It has a contrast that isn't gonna crush your images if you miss that exposure, but also will give you nice rich shadows and highlights in your images. It's kind of like a really everyday, really accessible black and white film that isn't gonna be too overbearing in terms of its like contrast or grain, but that also doesn't mean it's not gonna give you great results. It's flexible as well when capturing your shots, so a bit of over or underexposure on HP5 is definitely not the end of the world. Like, it's gonna be really forgiving for you. You can get shots with this stuff that are going to have a great range of tones and that breathe life into what you're shooting. In comparison to, like, a cheaper black and white film like Kentmere 400, you have more contrast and range to your images with HP5. Kentmere is, like, a cheaper option and it does have a flatter look to it in comparison to HP5's smooth contrast. They're both 400 ISO films, but HP5 definitely comes out on top here. If we look at it against something like a little more specialized, like Japan Camera Hunter's 400 ISO film, we'll see that like JCH has like a really, really punchy, really unique kind of contrast and look to it. Whereas HP5 like dials that back way more and is much more like middle of the road here in terms of, you know, really harsh looks. But the big debate of course is always HP5 versus Kodak's Tri-X film. Both are a 400 ISO film and share similarities, so it can a lot of the time just kind of come down to what's most available or how you like to shoot or what you develop with. Tri-X maybe has a punchier contrast to it, whereas HP5 can be more flexible in terms of exposure. Both also have a very similar grain to them as well. It's relatively unobtrusive and it's just kind of like a standard looking grain for a 400 ISO film. I like this stuff in 35 millimeter, but looking at it in medium format off of the Mamiya Universal in six by nine, the shots are great. The medium grain and the images impact the overall shot so little on a large negative like this six by nine stuff. It just looks super smooth and really sharp. And HP5 is definitely a sharp film that's easy to work with. And stepping it up to something like 120 or bigger, like four by five can give you some really great images. Also keep in mind, 
find the sheer size of like a six by nine negative in comparison to a 35 millimeter negative. When you stack them up side by side, it really shows like the amount of information that you can capture when you're moving up to a bigger negative like that. 120 gives HP5 more of a smoothness and like fine grain to it because of the sheer size of the negative. I'm definitely not here to try and settle any sort of debate between Tri-X and HP5 because my advice is that you should probably just shoot both and figure out what you personally prefer. There is enough similarities between them that it can maybe just come down to something specific that is really more tailored to your own shooting style that makes you like one more than the other. Of course, grain and contrast are also impacted by the workflow for developing that you take when you're doing this stuff. Different developers can also impact grain and contrast. So of course, results may vary, but overall HP5 is not gonna have like a super crazy heavy contrast and like really like harsh look to it that you might see from different kind of more specialized or unique stuff like JCH or like really low ISO stuff like Adox film. HP5 is just more of like a classic, really standard black and white film. And also it just kind of speaks for itself here. Ilford is definitely a name that is worth learning about and shooting the film that they make if you're getting into film photography for the first time. Don't just kind of stick to like Kodak and Fuji stuff simply because like maybe they're the biggest or most well-known brains off the top of your head when you get into film because there's a lot of other options out there. Even though they're not a company that makes color films, their black and white stuff is definitely some of the best stuff that's available out there for you guys to shoot. Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribe if you haven't done so already. There's also information in the description below for the Analog Resurgence PO Box. If you've got something really interesting or something bizarre or film related stuff that you want to send along for me to show off, or shoot, or try out, or talk about on the channel, then the information is there. I'll also throw just some quick links for buying some HP5 stuff, if that's stuff that you're really after. You can also get disposable cameras that are loaded with HP5 from Ilford as well. Also links for the Analog Resurgence Patreon if you wanna support this stuff so that I can keep doing more and more of it in the future, as well as a link to Pro 8mm out in California if you're looking to get your hands on Super 8 and 16mm for the motion picture side of things, if that's what you're interested in. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys Soon. Before I go, I've got to do some mail and the Patreon shout outs. So uh, I've just got a few things that showed up to the P.O. Box within the last couple weeks that I haven't gotten a chance to show off. First is one that came from the Film Photography Project and they sent along a couple of rolls of their new uh, black and white negative Wolfman film. So keep an eye out for that coming up soon as a roll review and they were super kind to send that along along with uh, some stickers. The film photography people are always super amazing, so I will throw their information in the link uh, in the description down below. And something special came to me uh, just recently from Angus McNaughton, who also a little while ago sent me some expired uh, Seattle Filmworks rolls, and I would love to do a video at some point on Seattle Filmworks because there's an interesting little bit of uh, history to them. And then also the underwater Canon 35mm camera. But he says, hey Noah, what's in the box is a UMIG waterproof Super 8 camera. Uh, I have barely looked at it. It is what it is. Maybe you can use it. Maybe it will work or maybe it can sit at the bottom of your fish tank and look pretty cool. Anyways, love your videos and content, especially when you use rare slash unique and old cameras. So yes, in this box, is the UMIG Nautica. The UMIG Nautica was a waterproof Super 8 camera made by uh, the UMIG company. And UMIG made projectors and cameras and a lot of things during that period of time. And it requires a special O-ring that goes around the door that makes the camera waterproof. And you can take it like in the water, under the water and everything. So uh, I will have to do some tests to make sure that this is in good shape, which would be great because then I can do an underwater camera video at some point, but there are people who do sell replacement uh, rings for the door that mean that hopefully I can get it up and running again. So thank you so much, Angus, for sending me this along because uh, this definitely has a place in the lineup of Super 8 cameras. And the Patreon shoutout, so a huge special thank you to Abby Henderson, Abel Sylvia, Alex Onkin, Alan Thomason, Anna Luisa Bernardez, BW, Bearded, Benjamin MacArthur, Bingling Zoo, Blake Moeller, Bobby, Brian DeMartin, Carson Fuller, Caesar, Chalian Chris, Chaz Allen, Chris Rar, Clifford Graham, Colin McCreel, 
Colin Jackson, Dan Gross, David Kelsey, David Pirinelli, Derek Konigsberg, Edwin Goodwin, Emma Clyden, Eric Machin Christensen, Frederick Kulatunga, Fuchigu Gaurav Pai, Juliana Lepedalina, Gwen Clement, Henry and Megan, Ian Hamilton Cummings, Ian Farber, Ian Frank, Jamie Maldonado, Jeremy Lee Camp, Jeremy McDonald, Jonathan Hurd, Larry O, Matt Bacon, Matthew Ellers, Nick Kosh, Orlando Perez, Poppy, Purple Doug, Ramblings from Canada, Raul Suet de Morris, Richard S. Pascucci, Roger Jansons, RTH, Ryan Peters, Scott Vansel, Scott Walker, Sean Williams, The Super 8 Skateboard Company, Taylor Brown, Taylor Cusella, Thomas Wibley, Tiago Almanca, Tobias Erickson, Travis Tobin, and Tycora Thomas. And an extra special shout out to Carson Fuller, Chalian Christ, David Pirinelli, Eric Machin Christensen, Ian Hamilton Cummings, Taylor Brown, and The Super 8 Skateboard Company for going above and beyond on the Patreon and all that extra support just really helps me to cover some of the expenses of the channel and keep this stuff going and grow it further and further. So thank you guys so much and I'll see you guys soon.